Oh, g'day. I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me. Are you worried about the rising cost of food or even worse, a food crisis, running out of food, no food at all? Well, a worldwide fertilizer shortage, supply problems, energy crisis, and even a lack of fruit and veg workers is putting pressure on food supplies. And how about inflation? It's out of control. The only thing that's been going down and fast in the last few years is the IQ of our politicians. What a bunch of ba bananas. Well, it's enough to drive your bananas. So if we can't rely on governments and big corporations, and we can't, well then we must take steps on an individual level to buffer ourselves against hard times. And that's why in this video, I'm gonna give you my six top crops to grow at home to save you from starving. Let's get into it. These six foods, I've put a lot of thought into them. They had to be ones that you can effectively and easily grow at home in an average sized yard, which also give the best return for harvest, have good preserving qualities, and of course, high sustenance to keep us going in an emergency. Number one is potatoes. You say potato and I say potato. I saved these potatoes from last season. If only I could remember the date. But anyway, let's have a look at them. A little bit over chitted, but we might be able to get away with planting some. Anyway, I'll have a go at growing them later. Luckily, I've got some new seed potatoes to plant as well. But did you know the great famine in Ireland back in 1845 was due to a lack of potatoes? It's true. Over a million people died of hunger despite efforts from England and the USA to help. Potatoes grew so easily and are so full of calories that the Irish population basically became dependent on them and when the crops were suddenly devastated by a fungal disease called late blight, they effectively ran out of potato chips and starved. What the Irish didn't know back then was the key to growing potatoes is diversity. Grow different varieties at the same time and from year to year to limit a buildup of pests and disease. These days there are more varieties of potatoes and ones that have better resistance to disease. And speaking of diversity, I love the diverse ways that potatoes can be grown, such as direct in ground or hilled up in trenches, boxes or containers. There's a way to grow potatoes that suits just about everywhere, every budget and every sized property. I think it's interesting how potatoes have gone from a main to a side on a plate like fries. And during tough times, potatoes could become your main again. And just quietly, it wouldn't be that bad. I'm a sucker for potato chips. Number two is corn. Not this, it looks very similar, but that's sugar cane. During the potato famine, the USA sent tons of corn to Ireland in order to help the starving population. And then the Irish made bourbon out of it. Only joking about the bourbon bit. No, they survived off corn chips. And of course, many other things derived from this wonderful grain slash vegetable, depending on how it's consumed. Corn is one of the three biggest plant-based food sources in the world. Rice and wheat are the others, in case you're wondering. But unlike rice and wheat, corn can be grown effectively on a much smaller scale and still produce a lot of food. Corn has a compact and upright growing habit which saves space. It can be interplanted in the garden with other crops like beans and squash to utilise even more space. And corn grows as fast as grass because it is grass. Just like commercially, homegrown corn has many uses from eating it straight on the cob to making flowers, grits, tortillas and popcorn. 
All these things can be easily done at home without too much effort, making corn extremely versatile. Even the whole plant can be chipped and put back into the garden as a nutritious mulch. No wonder corn became such an important crop for humanity after its discovery in Mexico about 10,000 years ago. And now it's grown on every continent around the world except for Antarctica. And I encourage you to grow it as well because the way things are going, we're not gonna be able to afford to eat at Taco Bell. Number three is cabbage. Now, before you screw your nose up, hear me out. Firstly, cabbage is known to lower blood pressure. And with all the terrible news spewing out of the idiot box these days, we need all the help we can get to lower our blood pressure and heart rate. And cabbage has a heap of other health benefits, such as it's full of nutrients to help bone building, immune system, muscle function, and energy, which are all vital if you're trying to survive. Cabbage grows relatively fast, and I think it's remarkable how tight and juicy the heads grow in such a short amount of time. And cabbage can go a long way feeding a family using it as a fill-in stew, shredded on its own and fried, or raw in a slaw. KFC even use it in their burgers. It's easy to preserve too. You can freeze cabbage, freeze dry it, simply keep it in the crisper for several weeks to use all the time, or ferment it to make tasty foods like kimchi and sauerkraut which also accentuates the health benefit. This kraut was made from last season's crop almost 12 months ago, and it's still awesome. And if you don't like the taste of cabbage, I say get used to it or fry it up with bacon. That makes everything taste good. Growing cabbage is easier than people think. I hear food gardeners say how cabbage moth destroys their crops or the birds eat it before they can, but it's one of the easiest crops to protect. Cabbage doesn't need to be pollinated, so you don't have to worry about bees or anything like that. And there aren't really any long stalks that can be easily broken off. So all you need to do is drape over with a fine net and that's it. Sit back and your cabbage crop is protected. Number four is pumpkin. There couldn't be anything easier than sowing a few pumpkin seeds and letting the vine meander around your garden doing whatever it wants. If you look around our place, you'll find pumpkins everywhere. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe pumpkins originated in North America, which makes sense about Halloween because if you can't possibly eat them all, well, you might as well make something out of them. But just imagine for a sec that you are starving. Well, you wouldn't be carving. Instead, you'd be eating every one of these scary squash. Is squashes? Pumpkins aren't just a pretty face, they are very good for you. And whilst being surprisingly low in calories for such a dense and often large veggie slash fruit, they make up for it in fibre, making you feel fuller than you are, which can help if you're hungry. Plus pumpkins are full of vitamin A, which is needed for good eyesight. So you can eyeball the next politician who comes walking along smiling like a moron, handing out $200 to grandma to try to compensate her for the rising cost of living. Number five is beans. These are a dwarf French bean grown on this mini trellis in this raised garden bed. And it was for good reason that the early settlers in the outback and also out west in the USA ate a lot of beans and it wasn't for cheap entertainment. Beans are almost the complete food containing most vitamins, nutrients and essential amino acids needed by humans to live. The bean seed can be stored or preserved easily through drying or canning and they don't take up much storage space so they are ideal to keep as a survival food. Beans don't take up much room in the garden either as they typically grow vertical. So you can fit more in a smaller area, which means that you can get bigger bang for buck for harvest compared to space. There are a ton of different varieties of beans to grow and because they practically make their own nitrogen fertilizer by forming a relationship with bacteria in the soil, beans can also add more to your garden than they take. So forgive the flatulence, because if you're fighting to survive, you won't worry about that. And remember, if you don't eat, 
you don't fart, and if you don't fart, you die. Number six is tomatoes. Nothing goes better with beans than tomato sauce. And cooked tomatoes to make tomato sauce actually enhances a very important antioxidant called liposine. This antioxidant is known to be one of the most important cancer preventative antioxidants we can eat. So growing tomatoes for the sauce alone is good enough reason. Behind me is a Tommy Toe and this one here in my hand is a berry tomato. But there are many more benefits such as tomatoes go well with most other foods and help to bulk up and add flavour to otherwise dull tasting dishes. And of course tomatoes are just good on their own. Mm. They can be dried and made into tasty snacks that are healthy to eat or pickled and spread on breads or biscuits and canned or frozen to preserve and use later. Tomatoes are easy to grow, especially these cherry types. And they also have a good soil tolerance range, which means you can grow them in a lot of mediums without too much preparation or worry. You can grow tomatoes from seed or simply clone it in the garden from off cuts. Bury it several inches deep, keep it watered, and in no time a new plant will grow. I've said this a lot in the past and I'll keep saying it. Homegrown tomatoes aren't artificially ripened with ethane gas, unlike supermarket tomatoes. Our tomatoes taste better, they're healthier for you, and they cost considerably less to grow than to buy them. And one other question, what is a tomato? Is it a fruit or a vegetable? Botanists call it a fruit, and nutritionists call it a vegetable. I call it a fruitable. Can you think of any other crops that might save you from starving? If you can, tell me what and why down in the comments section below. You know, growing these six staples that we just talked about, or being self-sufficient in at least something, is more than just about saving money. It's peace of mind knowing that you'll have something in case the world turns to custard, and probably because of the actions of some custard gut politicians. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a big, I'm not going to starve, thumbs up, and share the video around because of course it helps my channel out more than just about anything. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now.